Thank you, Jesus. All right. We're going to get ready. We're going to get ready. We're going to get ready. I'm, I'm good. But, um, my God, we're going to get ready for the offering. Amen. Um, we're going to ask you if you would bow your hands real quickly. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you now. Even in our little giving, even in our little that we bring to you, God, you said that we're to bring it ye into the storehouse and prove to God that it will be me in your house. God, we didn't come to rob you today. We just came simply to obey you. We came to honor you, God, because your word says that we're to give. And you said even in our giving, God, you would Give back to us good measure, press down, shake it together, running over, God. You said you would cause men to give unto our bosom. We just got to trust you. God, we trust you that they would our little. We trust you, Lord, even in the giving of this month to our leader. We trust you, God, for another year that you have allowed us to be a blessing. Will you bless every giver, bless every sower. And at your appointed time, God, bless us according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. We're going to ask our officers if you would come this time and receive our offering.
that we will continue to lift him up, Father, in every way that we know how. That we may bless him, Lord God, with uplifted hands and a praise as we give you glory, Father, for him. We thank you for this house of prayer, a place of refuge, where we can come and get revealed, Father, when the world has slapped us down. But we can get back up, Father, and go back and fight one more time. We thank you, Father, for this place. We thank you, O oh God, for being the God that you are in our life. We thank you for being our Lord and our Savior. We just honor you today. Bless this service today, Father. Bless your people as only you can do. That we may leave here better than we did when we came. This we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. The I mean, scripture reading comes from Isaiah, the 11th chapter, verses 1 and 2. Jesus Christ, the righteous branch. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And he and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together and give God some glory. Hallelujah. As we worship and we give them praise together. Come on.
ministry of Christ. If I could just capitalize your mind just for a second or two, bring us into oneness of this song. I was thinking as Sarah was singing, and the blessing of the Lord was going forth saying, Thank you. It says, I just want to thank you. Are there any I? And she said, How you kept my mind, healed my body, saved my soul. Nobody, nobody did that but the Lord.
But there's nobody like our God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My God. If that's the God you serve, my God, I will say it again. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You over Jireh, our provider. You over Nisi, our healer. Glory be to nobody like him. Glory be to God. It's been proven throughout the times of old. They call upon their God, my God, and he could not answer, my God. But our God answers. I was sharing with Sister Morgan and the ministers on the other evening. I am so grateful that our God hear prayer. And two things about prayer, they cannot hurt me, and they got to help me. Anyone that prays a righteous prayer helps me. And anyone that does not pray a righteous prayer can't hurt me. So God don't hear. I think something hurts you that God don't hear. He hears the prayers of the right. Now that ought to be made you as a righteous person. If you hope that I'm praying and God hears me. Oh my God, I am not going to pump you, prime you. We're in a time now where you got to know for yourself that our God, my God, is real. And he'll never leave me, never forsake me, no matter how bad things look. He's right here, right now, always and forever. Somebody say, always and forever. Glory be to God. We are so thankful for our wife. For 57 years. Amen. 57 years. Amen. And our daughters and son in laws, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, cousins, relatives, and friends, even the family of Father, Son, Holy Ghost Church. It's a wonderful feeling to belong to a family. Amen. It is a wonderful feeling. Look beyond those that have strayed, those that have gone different directions. But it is a wonderful thing to be blown and be a part of a family. My God. Even the family of God is one of the greatest ones. Hallelujah. We are so grateful that God is so good to us and have brought us to this place right now right in the midst of his people. I want to share with you to the glory of God. I am, again, so thankful for the ministers and the peoples of this house of prayer. Your love that you show to us as pastor and first lady and mother of the church, your love that the children of God shows to us is uncomparable. Amen. It's unbeatable. Amen. It's rich and full of love. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we were just so blessed this month already from the calls, the texts, the hellos, the stopping by, the greeting, the blowing of the horn. We're just so blessed to be a part of a people that have been proven that nothing is stronger than love. Amen. Aren't you glad God loves us and we show God how much we love him by loving one another? My God, you should be blessed. There are many and thousands does not respect authority. That's many and thousands does not give honor to who honor is due. That's many and thousands get jealous when honor is bestowed upon someone else. But you should be grateful, my God, that we can do it God's way and be blessed. Oh, bless his name. We could not then and now and see no need in the future of doing anything but what we've been done to now. Amen. It's coming. I would do this had God not spoken to me several years ago. Amen. About pastors anniversary. Amen. Pastor appreciation. Amen. We're not
not talking about everyone else because I am not everyone else's pastor. I am your pastor. Glory be to God. And the anniversary and the appreciation should come from you as it is. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And we're so grateful that other pastors are able to give pastor's anniversary to the congregation that they have been pleased and appreciated. But you are above everyone else because you appreciate your pastor. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful for all of you. Amen. Glory be to God. I want to minister to us today to the glory of God. Amen. And we pray that you will grab hold to the word. It would be so easy if I could just allow myself to sit back, relax, and let everybody exalt God and me. Amen. But it's not about me. I've been called with an assignment. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I cannot turn my assignment over to somebody else to do it. And when opportunity presents itself, every other preacher, every other deacon, every other saint, every singer, every musician will have opportunity to carry out their assignment. But I cannot relinquish my assignment that God has assigned me to, amen, to carry it out and no one else can do it. I have many helpers to help me with my assignment, but I cannot avoid my assignment. Glory be to God. I have been a called and assigned to live holy, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled. My God, fire baptized. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And I would encourage all of us to fulfill purpose. I am so grateful. I must say it. I must say it. Not because I'm there. I've been saying it all the time. I thank God for what we call through the Bible elders. Oh, my God. Elder women, elder mothers, elders in the ministry. Where would we be without elders? Someone who have been trailblazed and set an example how we are to live out this life of holiness. Oh, my God. We could not live this life of holiness without examples. Oh, my God. Jesus the Christ is our example. Glory be to God. We know how to love God, but we don't know how to live out the true meaning of sanctification, sanctification, holiness, and fill of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Evidence of speaking in tongues without an example. And Jesus Christ is our example. Then and now. Hallelujah. My God, I want to use the next few minutes, my God, to stir us, to remind us, to encourage us. As the Lord spoke to me concerning this message, he gave me a word to give us. Amen. So many of us in the body of Christ are getting tired of being free. I want you to jot that down. If you're on Facebook, text it. My God, text, jot it down, post it, that people are getting tired of being free. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And, and when I think about that, my sisters and brothers, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Church family, worldwide, glory be to God. When God brought his people out of Egypt after 400 years of bondage in slavery. And some of you don't have to go back to Egypt as on the Pharaoh, some of you like me can go back to the farm, digging sweet potatoes, picking peas in the cotton field, not having enough to eat, going to bed cold, making fire, chopping firewood. Are oh, you getting my drill? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And how the Lord brought them out of Egypt. They were so excited coming out with silver and gold. Oh, my God, none of fever among them, no sickness came out. Glory be to God. With a return, with an investment that has been withheld from them, come out with nothing needed but to praise God and give him thanks and glory for delivering them out of the hand of the Egyptian, out of the hand of Pharaoh. 
they trusted and believed on the bondage like our Madeals and our big mama and boo mama when we were children. They had to get up and go to the cotton field, corn field, okra field, wherever it went, praying that God going to deliver my children. God going to have my children have it better than me. Now, you may have come from the east side, west side, north side, and south side, but now you're over here on God's side, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't care what sin and state you come from. If you're in this mid, and on peoples I know, you didn't come up with a silver spoon in your hand. You came up to the one. You can say now, had it not been for the Lord on my dear side, now on my side, I wouldn't have made it. You might well just go ahead and give God thanks because he brought you out of something. Hallelujah. And I realize, I recognize, thanks of God as I preach and encourage you. Abundance don't have to be in the cotton field. Some of you was on the abundance in your own home by Uncle John, Uncle Bill, raping you while Mama was gone. Glory be to I don't know who been raped and ravaged and abused. My God, sexual molested. Glory be to But God has brought you out. Glory be to God. I don't know what your background is. Somebody was on dope and should have been overdosed and dead, but God brought you out. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. He got out in the wilderness. Glory be to God. And started mumbling and complaining. They was getting tired of being free. That's not my message, but they was getting tired. I encourage the listeners and Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the preachers, and all of us today that hear my voice and read it next week and Google it next week and put it up on Facebook, put it up on uh, YouTube, and hear this message again. Don't get tired of being free. Glory be. If you get tired of being free, you're going back to bondage as sure as I'm talking. And the bondage I'm talking about, God freed us from sin. He brought us out of sin. Should have been dead. Should have died in our sin. Should have died on the juice joint floor. Should have died in prostitution. Should have died in adultery. But God brought us out. you was alcoholic, next door to a drug addict, glory be to God. Some of you was delivered and never went to 12 steps. You took the first step to the Lord and he delivered your mind. Delivered you in your mind. Hallelujah. Now God saw because you hooked up with something or somebody taking you back into bondage. Glory be to God. I would encourage us today. Not that I'm beating you down, beating up on you, but I come to encourage somebody. Glory be to God. I come to encourage you. We've been free to clap our hands. I'm talking about believers. I'm talking about those who've been free. My God, hallelujah. I hope it never, no more after this day, we have to pump or think we have to pump somebody. When well, we're talking like this and preaching good like this, if you've been free and getting back in the fun, and you ought to say, Lord, free me this day. Yeah. Hallelujah. God know right where you at. He know right where you at. He know exactly what you need. Yeah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm ministering like this today. Somebody ought to repent from their sin. Yeah. My God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to just say, without getting up, or oh, you want to get up, run to the altar. You're free. We used to do this without having altar calls. We'd be up singing songs. I remember in Father, Son, Holy, going to be singing songs. And people would make their own altar and run up and bow down on the altar. Glory, because you're free or want to be free. I don't know which one you ought to thank God for being free. Or you ought to ask God to help you to free you. Thank God for what he 
dead. My God, thank God for opening doors, sacrificing his life. But there was one greater than Martin Luther King. No disrespect, there was one greater than him who came over 2,000 years ago and sacrificed his life to give us freedom. can do it. No evangelist, no prophet can do it. Because God is the only one who made the sacrifice for us to be free. How I many thank God for freedom? Freedom. Hallelujah. But one of the things about being free, you never lose or God take away your will to choose. You want to choose to be in bondage, you can stay there. And the moment you choose, I want to be free, God will rescue you. Can I encourage people in this day and time just to be real? We done seen enough falseness. We done seen enough unrealness in people and things and leadership that we ought to appreciate realness. There's some real people still exist. Glory be to God. I want to encourage us. I want to encourage us in the next few minutes. Or try not to hold you long. Amen. But my God, where else do we really have to go better than heaven? I'm not going to use that to prolong that time and keep you here. I want you to understand, if you want to go to heaven, Amen. As Don Ann said earlier, Prophet Ann said, I don't know what all going to be there. I just heard that uh, milk and honey and, and street pay with gold. I am not concerned about that as much as I want to be where Jesus is. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. My God, I just want to be where they is. And if I make it to heaven, everything will be all right. I've asked this before, and I won't do this for any points or any reason, but I could ask the question today, who all want to go to heaven? And I assure you by Facebook Live conference call and here, if you are asked who want to go to heaven, no matter what your state is, your state of mind, what are you done, what are you not done, in reality, you want to go to heaven. I mean, just based on what you heard about heaven, what you've been taught about heaven, not whether you live and hold it, whether you live and right, whether you gave your life to the Lord. The question is, I could ask, who in here really wants to go to heaven? And I'm sure if you're in your right mind, I didn't ask you to raise your hand. Amen. I'm just asking the question, who in here really wants to go to heaven? And if your answer is yes, then I would ask the other question, who in here really want to go to hell? And I am almost positive that answer would be no. Nobody ought to want to go to hell. And we're living in a time where it is easy and it's been so convenient and so popularized till it is easy not to say anything much about heaven or hell. Just preach to people that when you're dead, you're done. Live life to the fullness now. But it does matter. Glory be to God. There is a time it's going to matter. And hell is for real. I said, hell is for real. My God, you don't have to go, but it's for real. And if you should end up there, I should end up there, the story has been told that the rich man died, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. We know it's going to be hot because he said, have Lazarus to dip his hand in water and touch my tongue. Hallelujah. Glory. So we know hell going to be hot. Second thing about hell, we know once you get there, there's no way out. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And the third thing about hell, hallelujah, God's not going to send you there. It's your choice and your will if you go to hell. My God. And the rich man had another request. That's why it's so important for preachers, pastors, evangelists, 
prophets, teachers, to live right that bring God glory and preach to the people so if they don't hear and go to hell, it'll be their fault. Amen. That's right. And the rich man said, would you since Lazarus can't help me, will you send one of the prophets, uh, someone from the dead to go back and warn my brothers? Oh, my sisters and brothers, I'm trying to warn us. Oh, ain't nobody coming from heaven to warn you. Ain't nobody coming from here. You got the preachers now. You got the pastor. If we don't do what God has said, don't look for big mama to come from heaven and preach you. He got preachers. Glory be to God. You better learn who's preaching to you. Because your soul is involved in it. Your soul is tied up in it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And he said, no. Glory be to God. I got the prophets there to preach to them. If I send someone from the dead, they won't believe it. My God, if you don't believe now, you will not believe then. Some of you have had dreams. Some of you have had vision. Some of you have had testimony you can say that my big mama, my mother, or someone that you led to believe that went on to be with the Lord righteous, that they spoke to you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You didn't hear them because if someone spoke to you that at home uh, with the Lord and brought a message to you about change, and you didn't change business as usual. Amen. Come on now, say amen. So amen. if you did have someone re- spoke to you from believing that their life was righteous and through a dream, through a vision, a loved one, a parent, a grandparent, and they told you to change and you didn't change, it's hard and difficult you're going to hear me today. Amen. Glory, because we're saying the same thing. If God allows someone to speak to us and bring us a message, it's going to be about righteousness. Hallelujah. It's going to be about holiness. So if you won't hear them, you won't hear me. But blessed be to God those that hear the truth. Hallelujah. Blessed be to God that those that receive the truth. Oh, my God, my time is almost beginning. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. How many of you have, whether you ate breakfast this morning or will eat breakfast or lunch later on or when you eat a meal? How many of you know a meal tastes its best when you're hungry? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The same meal you can eat that someone spent hours fixing and preparing. If you've had junk food, if you've had good food, if you've eaten before you got to the dinner time, you will not eat or enjoy the meal as much because you're full of something. Amen. Glory be to God. And how many of you know when you are absolutely thirsty, Diet Coke, Pepsi won't take the place of water? Amen. My God, hallelujah. When you drink a cool glass of water, when you're thirsty, my God, who oh, it soothes you. And that's the way I hope the word will do, continue to do even today. When we become hungry and thirsty for righteous, we will eat the whole roll. You will eat the part when it says repent. My God, you will eat the part when it says forgive. Because it will taste good to you. But if you're full of junk food, well, I can do what I want to do. I'm grown. Can't get in my business. You won't enjoy this meal. Hallelujah. Somebody said, let's eat. eat. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. My God. It may sound foolish, but those are the ones going to be blessed by the gospel. Because God will take the foolish thing and confirm it into wise. It'll make sense if you receive it in your spiritual ear. Glory be to God. So we talk and come to us from the book of Romans. The epistle of Paul, the apostle, glory be to God, one who established many churches, one who uh, causing many saints to live for the Lord. My God. How I many of you know you can really cause people to live for the Lord and not pastor a house of prayer? 
But if we preach and feed the people, sooner or later they will get hungry. So in the first chapter of Romans, verse 16, if you would stay with me just a few more moments. Romans, the first chapter, and verse 16, you read it in its entirety, and you will find out the heart of this text that God gave me. You'll find everything that will tie in with the text and the message today, and you will see, according to the scripture, Romans, the first chapter, all the way through to uh, the 32nd verse. You will find out people are getting tired of being free. Hallelujah. When you get tired of being free, you're going back to where you come from. Come on now. When you get tired of being free and having your liberty in Christ, who made you free to live holy, free from sin, when you get tired of this life, you're going back to which you come from. And there's a possibility that some of us has not come all the way out and been free from sin, but you're coming out. Glory be to God. In Romans, the first chapter, in the 16th verse, it reads, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the, love, to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. I want to use for a subject and a text the power of the gospel unto salvation. The power of the gospel unto salvation. The gospel doesn't just make you feel good. The gospel doesn't just make you say hallelujah. The gospel does not just make you do your dance, sing, speak in tongue, and the list goes on. But the power of the gospel is unto salvation. And see, the Bible definition of salvation, many can be saved, many can believe, many can speak in tongue, but they may not have salvation. You can beg the different, you can search the scripture, but you're going to come up with the truth that I'm talking about. If you do it in your own technology, in your own opinion, in your own ability, instead of looking at it through the scripture, then it may be debatable. But I say again, many people can believe, many people can be saved, but they may not have salvation. And salvation from a biblical term means deliverance. Oh, God, right there's enough to preach. Right there, somebody should have got up and said, Lord, deliver me. See, y'all just don't want to. I'm telling you, you got tired of being free. And you done slip back in the bondage, and you won't even holler, deliver me again, Lord. I mean, if he did it once, he can do it again. Glory. You know when you first was delivered, there was no lie that would come out of your mouth without making you say, Lord, forgive me. Come on, you know when you first was delivered and believe and receive salvation, there was no wrong you wanted to do. Come on, nobody had to make you say hallelujah. If you find yourself can't do those things like you did then, somebody might need to say, Lord, deliver me again. Oh, bless his name. So salvation means delivering from this world and sin and its consequences. I've lived to see it. Glory. You can be saved and still bound in the consequences of that wrong. Come on, say amen. The enemy will hold you hostage with the consequences of sin by reminding you you ain't saved. Glory be nobody loves you. People don't forget, but God will give you the power of the gospel unto salvation where he will deliver you from this world, from sin and its consequences. Glory. How many of you know the consequence of sin bears a strong penalty? Glory. The consequence of sin brings ruin. Every marriage that's end up 
been divorced, it was because the consequence of sin. Right. May not have been yours, but it's somebody. Right. Come on, I've heard testimony from believers to say that, my God, you're getting on my last nerve. I remember I wouldn't take that. But when you get true deliverance through the gospel that brings salvation, you take that and some more. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So the consequences of sin bears a great consequence of pain. Now, thanks be to God, the power of the gospel unto, unto salvation. It is blessed. I see it here. My daughters have been through this. So I throw no picking bones at nobody. Glory be to God. But I'm talking about the power of the gospel. Isn't it a blessing that even when we mess up or we've been hurt and it end up in the consequence of just divorce, isn't it good that God will deliver you and allow you to marry again? Oh, my God. Hallelujah. And once he deliver you through such as that, you ought to be the most powerful husband to your wife. And wife, ought to, everybody don't get a second chance. Oh, come on now. I say everybody don't get another chance. Glory. And people sometimes get bitter because they were hurt once. They get bitter with everybody. But God will deliver you if you went through a bad marriage. And God bless you with a new marriage. You will not see the old residue from your old marriage into the new marriage. Come on now. I know I'm helping somebody. Glory. Some people can't enjoy their marriage that God allows them to marry again. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because they see too much residue of the first brokenness. Oh, my God. But who God delivers, they can be trusted. Who God set free, they're not in bondage. So here we're talking about the power of the gospel unto salvation. Say unto salvation, unto deliverance. Sometimes, my God, when we get saved, get filled with the Holy Ghost, there's a process sometimes in being delivered. Come on now. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me. When I got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost in 1979, I had to be delivered from money because I was so bound in religionism that, well, we pay dues twice a month, a dollar Sunday. And we were taught by the old deacon at that time that a preacher, a pastor, don't need no money, need a job. Glory. False teaching can put you in bondage and not even be your sin. Oh, God help me in this place. Who you listen to and don't know truth can keep you in bondage. Came into holiness even in this ministry. My God, saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, preaching the gospel. And they're talking about tithe. 10% of your earnings goes to God. They never said go to the Bishop John Baker. They said tithe goes to God. 10% into the storehouse. My God, hallelujah. And the Bishop Baker, being the pastor and the bishop over the ministry God gave him, that means he was over everything. Somebody over the pews, over the mic, over the chairs, over everything, money, everything. You can't have a leader over some and somebody else over the head. The pastor is over everything. Come on now. Some people are still on the bondage. Because the church is being ran by seven ungodly men called deacons. They run the business. They pick the pastor. They can fire the pastor. They're still on the need deliverance. Oh, God help me. And that spirit ain't just over yonder. That spirit will live in here if you ain't delivered. Oh, my God. And that sometimes when I talk about the preacher or the deacon, and the saint that sometimes it just makes me feel good to get a response. I'm going to try this again. Glory be to God. Holy Ghost feels deacons don't run the church. And I know you got your mask on, 
But my ears ain't stopped up. I ain't heard no deacon say nothing yet. I say in this ministry, in this Bible, if you're delivered, Holy Ghost deacons do not run the church. They don't control the pastor. This is good preaching to the deacon. This ought to be good preaching to you. That it's going to take not only just being delivered, it's going to take to be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. But you can have the Holy Ghost but not delivered. But the power of the gospel, which is the good news, will deliver you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank God for these young preachers. I call them young by the word young, young in heart, young in spirit, young in ability. Glory be to God. But they are not but just a few years behind me. Come on now, say amen. We all once used to jump pews and skip across the aisle and run, but we can't do that much anymore. You don't have to tell it because if I slow down at a certain age, you're going to slow down. Oh, time 
had been. Glory be to God. Paul was encouraging the Roman believers. Hallelujah. This gospel reached Baptists. This gospel reached sinners. This gospel reached downtrodden people. This gospel reached broken people. This gospel reached the rich and it reached the poor. It didn't say a rich man couldn't enter the kingdom. He said it was hard. Can I get a witness? And too much time taken to really teach on that. Because to for a rich man or a poor man, it's more easy for a, a poor man to humble himself using the sheep going into the sheepfold. My God, it was a porterhole there. My God, that only the shepherd and the sheep could go through. But if a camel go through, he had the lowest there. Because the hump on his back would hit the sheepfold. Can I get a witness? My God, so it's hard for a rich man. Not uh, the rich peoples of the world. Can I get a witness? Some of the rich men, million billionaires. That's not who we're talking about. We're rich in pride. Glory be to God. We're rich all about his means. Rich also. Poor folks can be rich. When you exalt yourself more highly than you ought to, it's hard for you to humble yourself. Hallelujah. It's hard for you to say, I'm sorry to the Almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. And the sheepfold was for the shepherd. And the shepherd know when a sheep would go to get out because he'll make his bed before the sheepfold. And if a sheep had to go out, he had to touch the shepherd. And I'm telling you, some of y'all done touch me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said, some of y'all done touch me in my spirit. Don't get tired of being free. Hallelujah. Just because you can't dance like you did 20 years ago. Don't get tired of being free. Lift them hands and tell the Lord thank you. Just because there's a group of young people that's stronger than we used to be. Don't get tired. Being tired. Lift those hands in that boy to tell the Lord, thank you. Glory be to God. I will live holy. I will stay delivered and set free. Glory be to God. So Paul, oh, we'll finish it up Wednesday night, maybe. Paul was encouraging every person in this world that we are facing hardship. Bad leadership from the White House to the church house, from the church house to our house. Bad leadership that all of us are guilty of sin. Holly, there's no one person that have done so much good and so much righteous that they haven't been guilty of sin. Hallelujah. Everyone has sinned. Glory be to God. If it was not the Sin, there had been no need for Jesus to come. It was sin when they offered up bulls, herpers. Can I get a witness? It was sin when they offered up doves and pigeons, blood on the altar to pay for sin. It was sin that once a year that the priest would go into the holiness of holiness and he had to wear bells on his uh, garment. And he had to keep moving. In the altar, holiness of holiness, he had to keep moving, and the bells would be ringing. And if he stopped dancing, if he stopped moving, and the bells no longer ring, he had a rope around him. And if the bells no longer ring and could not hear the movement of the priest that went in to offer up sin for the people, glory be to God. Had a rope around him. If the bell no longer rang, they drug him out. Because anybody went into the holiness of holiness with sin in them, they fell dead. You ought to be grateful that Jesus, the almighty, ultimate sacrifice, paid the sin debt for us. How we can come into the poor pit with sin in our life and don't die. How we can sing songs.
praying and Paul is encouraging the believers that all of us is guilty of sin which separated us from God and his commandment. And all of us are condemned to eternity apart from God. But because of the sacrifice of Jesus and the gospel that he rolled with all power in his hand and gave it to the preachers to give to the people, you ought to be glad that the gospel is the power unto salvation. I said the gospel that Jesus gave us to preach to you, it is the power unto salvation. You can be delivered this morning.
telling us to do. I done already repent. And I repent daily. Just in case. I repent of just in case. I really do. When I go before the Lord, I say, just in case. Glory to God. Glory be to God. 
and, and, and not only King Agrippa, Carolyn, he came to a group of scholars. He said, I don't come to you with enticing words. Oh, I know how to speak enticing words. I know how to speak eloquent of speech. But there ain't a time for that and it's time not for it. I don't worry about trying to speak eloquent to faithful. I want to preach Glory be to God. He said, uh, I want to talk to you. Glory be to God. I want to share my testimony with you. Because some people ain't going to be there to tell your testimony or to share him with it. Come on, say amen. Most time, if you got a testimony, you're there all by yourself. I don't care how many people you ask to intercede, pray for you. When deliverance came, you was all by yourself. So right now, you can be all by yourself in the midst of this congregation. You ought to be by yourself if you haven't already done so. Lord, forgive me. Lord, change me. Make me over. Glory be to God. And Paul said, you weren't there on the road to Damascus. Glory be to God. When the power of God knocked me off the animal that I was riding. Glory be to God. That ain't what it say, but I'm paraphrasing. Because the Bible said he knocked me off my ass. Amen. That's not a bad word. If you came up in the days of the Bible days and my days, Brother Walter, an ass or a jackass would call a stubborn mule. Come on, say amen. All the stubborn mules in here, say amen. So, can't be get mad with me when I preach the gospel. Somebody I ought not to say that. Glory be to God. I said what the Bible says. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And Paul said, I got to close now. Paul said, uh, you weren't there. I was on my way to the, on the road of Damascus to deal with the saints. Glory be to God. Bring them back dead or alive. Had a bounty on them. Dead or alive. A bright light shone from heaven. Yes. Glory be to God. All right. Glory be to God. Some of you ought to be getting a glimpse of that light right now. How he shined into your situation on your Damascus road. Some of you was headed to the crack house. That was your Damascus road. Some of you headed to, to adultery. That was your Damascus road. Some of you was going to some conference with your secretary. And your wife at home. That was your road to Damascus. I'm not going to get much amen from Facebook. Amen. But at least I don't get no criticism from her. Glory be to God. Usually I get lax and hard from preaching. Amen. Glory be to God. But I need amen from you because they can't say it. When I'm preaching truth. And he said, but this is my testimony. And it was so powerful. Brother Fred, the testimony about what God had did was so powerful to the king sitting in his seat. Said Paul, he respected him. Some of us have lost respect. For calling you your worldly name. For calling you your 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 mean name. Say amen. Calling you out of your name. But King Agrippa said, Paul, glory, he didn't call him Saul. He didn't call him old old brother. He said, you got to learn to respect those that bring you truth and live truth. Agrippa said, Paul, testimony was so powerful. I tell you, almost persuaded. I got in almost persuaded people here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You ought to be, you ought to be persuaded that I ain't going back and doing what I used to do that wasn't right. This day I'm starting by the power gospel unto salvation. I'm going to walk out of here today delivered, set free. That old mind I ain't going to have. That old man, I'm not going to leave him anymore. Glory be to God. And I'm going to do one more verse, one more subject, one more note, and I'm closing. Even those who are morally good at heart. we got some good people at heart. Glory be to God. But they can be good at heart this minute. And with a bad heart the next hour.
People can speak so good of you one hour and speak so evil you another hour. Oh, my God. Paul said we was once that way. Glory be to God. You ever smiled at somebody and told them how much you appreciate them? Then got on the way and said, they ain't no good. That we was once that way, but we was morally good and hard. The Bible says there is none righteous. There is none who seek after God. Therefore, all deserve judgment and condemnation. You'll find that if you keep reading in Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 and 11. I give myself to God. I put myself in a position to be criticized by man until they overcome. I place myself in position to be smitten with harsh words until God bring people into deliverance. I place myself into the position of sacrificing myself as unto the Lord until I see sinners repent. And they're going to be just like me and many of you. They're going to come back and say, if I just did it God way, I wouldn't have had to experience so many things. And they'll come back like many of you and I've had to do in times that I wasn't delivered. I've had to come back and tell my own founding bishop, thank you for the truth. You'll never appreciate the truth until you get delivered. Glory. You walk in truth. You live in truth. You die in truth. To God be the glory. I pray and hope that maybe we'll finish this message on another occasion. But if you would help me from today, you will walk out of here today delivered by the power of the gospel. Maybe a co-worker will see a change in you. And they would ask the question, I've been watching you all day. You ain't acting like you've been acting. What's the problem? Then you'll be able to say, by the power of the gospel, under salvation. I got this. Some of us are too ashamed. Remember what I said earlier? Paul said, I'm not ashamed. Some of you are too ashamed. You you say, you fear, you got the Holy Ghost, but you're not delivered to where you're not ashamed. Some of you just plain ashamed to mention Jesus' name in certain situations. God puts you in a place and the Holy Ghost moves up on you. Then ask somebody, are you born again? Or you say, many times we've been ashamed to not even say it. We let people walk away from us, thinking they're all right when God told us to ask them have they given their life to the Lord. We let them walk away from us by saying, pray for me. How can somebody unrighteous pray for you? And we refuse to ask righteous people to pray for us. I know you're changed. From last Sunday, that's why God would give me this message. I see it clearly even the more to preach the power of the gospel and the deliverance. Because you came up, every one of you came up last Sunday with a willingness under the evangelist's voice as she fed us, how many of you want the spirit of your pastor and your mother? Every one of you came up. But you're going to have to be delivered to hold on to it. Glory to God. Hold on, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Church family. Hold on, wives. I don't know when, if that fit you by Facebook Live or conference call in here. I don't know what you're going through in your home. I don't know where your children are on your heart. But they may not never get delivered in your time. But if they be like the thief on the cross, you ought to stay delivered and believe that God's going to save you. If they're bogged up in sin, all kinds of sin, and the greatest sin of all is walking in disobedience. You know, we came up in a time we were smoking, we was fighting, 
We was doing a whole lot of things as children, teenagers. Glory be to God. But one of the things our parents told us, you won't disrespect me in my house. We growing up in a time where the parents done turned the house over to the children. And they sit in the corner with their hands full. You don't have to cuss your children out. You don't have to beat them, but you got to put them in the hands of the Lord. Glory be to God. And you can live a life before your children. And at least they will respect you. Stop compromising to get along with your children. You cannot compromise enough to keep them out of sin. Glory be to God. Some of us need to pray. Some of us need to pray that God would keep them, cover them, protect them, no matter what they get into. Glory be to God. Doesn't matter how much we do for them, how much we brag on them, and how much we love them. They're living in a world where it will suck them up. We're living in a time where sin is at an all-time high. The more we preach against lesbianism, the higher it gets. Glory. It doesn't mind. It doesn't bother me as long as I'm one voice in here talking about sin. If you preach on repentance, that's sin. You don't have to preach on adultery, fornication, and, and lesbian, homosexual. That's my assignment. You preach on love. That's your assignment. You preach on forgive. That's your sign. But the more we preach on what God is against, the more sin going to rise. And I beg, I beg of you to have the spirit of your pastor, which is the spirit of Christ. Wherever and whoever you think is in adultery, fornication, lesbianism, drug addict, Homosexual, tell them to come here. I said it then, I will continue to more now than ever. Bring them here. Influence your children, whatever sin is, come to here. Glory be to God. Because your prayer love to them, and when they reach here with a collective prayer, they'll get delivered. They are not going to be able to walk out of drugs. They're not going to be able to work out of, walk out of same-sex marriage. They're not going to walk out of homosexualism. It's a spirit. It's got a strong grip on them. Even if they haven't entered into it, it's in their mind. Glory be to God. But I cry unto the saints of this church. If your son or daughter get into those sins, is it too hard for God? Some of you was that way of something. But God brought us out. Love them. Love the person that hates the sin. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Some of you don't know the story of some of the things Saul did. He did some things a lot worse than beating up on the saints. How do you know? I didn't say it's scripture, but how do you know Saul didn't rape some of them? Come on now. How do you know Saul didn't molest some of them taking them back? Some of them, some of then and now have lived some life before we got saved. But the power of the gospel is unto salvation. If all of us had to get up this morning right now and tell of our story before we got saved, then we would say what Mr. Clean said. You don't look like what you've been through. The power of the gospel on the Sabbath will change you. Oh, God. It'll make you look like when you share your testimony that you've never done that. I know from preaching. That's why I can preach this strong gospel. It was the gospel. We got people in this ministry would have been die-hard, dead crackheads if God had not delivered. Doesn't matter when I don't, I say things that God has done, I don't get an amen. Doesn't bother me because I know it to be true. There are people in this ministry that was an alcoholic and God delivered them from alcohol and they never went to 12 steps. We got people in this ministry that backslid and I can say this because they can't. And if you shame on your testimony when you told it, then you're 
shame every one I tell it. There's testimony that people have backslid in this church for 28 plus years. And God brought them back and they're here now. So don't tell me God through the power of the gospel. It's not under the Sabbath. He'll deliver you. Glory to the God. Glory to the God. Is anything too hard to God? Glory to the God. Thank you for allowing me to preach the gospel on third Sunday, what we call our anniversary celebration. I enjoy celebrating that day. Hallelujah. Oh, this is a celebration. And you can walk out of here and somebody ask on Facebook Live, come to call. I didn't know y'all were celebrating Bishop's anniversary. Glory be to God. How much money was raised? I don't know how much money, but I know how many souls were cut. delivered and set free. Amen. Glory be to God. I encourage us help somebody along the way. I encourage the preachers of this church, those that are delivered, don't become buddies with people in their soul may be lost. We can be friends. We can laugh. We can enjoy one another. But we ought not to let people see our nakedness. We ought not to let people see. Because if it's there, they're going to see it. That we're saying one thing and living another. Can't we just be real? I close with uh, the man out in California, Rodney King. Had it not been for a recording camera, He'd have just died or been beat up. Nothing never said or done. But because it was being recorded, it was brought to light. Many was penalized, punished for the wrong done. God got a recording camera on us. Glory be to God. And his eyes said, in every secret place, he knows content of our heart, he knows. And we ought to get to a place starting today, Evangelist Tony, we ought to be to a place today after Roger King came back and doctors and health came back to him and he got millions of dollars. Then he said, can't we all just get along? The enemy done beat up on us enough that God done deliver us. Can't our message, can't we all just get along? As sisters and brothers, sons and daughters of the Lord, all of us been beat up on by sin, maybe by people. But at this point, can't we all just get along? Preacher, our assignment was never to change people. Our assignment was to preach to them the power of the gospel unto salvation. Mothers, you did all you could do when you were raising them. You can't re-raise them when they get grown. I beg the difference from some of you. Just love them. Tell God place them in your hand. Will you stand with me? If you don't get healed, and I know of no one that ever said to me, Bishop, don't pray for me to be healed. I enjoy being sick. I enjoy being sick because God talked with me. That, that's foolish. God did not throw sickness upon you to get your attention. He got it at Calvary. 
he got it when he was pierced in the side. He was beaten all night long. His flesh pulled from his body with spice on a whip. Sister Morgan said, anybody beat somebody like that and they don't die, I run the other way or run to them. God love us. Mothers, please. I know some of you are having it tough, per se. But if it was your choice to raise your children and see them getting grown, and some of us now are having to do what we had to do, daughter, adopt our grandsons, our three and a half grandsons. We adopt all four of our grandsons when our daughters was not able at the time to rear them. Some of you are making those choices. Nobody forced me to do it. The Lord didn't force me to do it. Before we adopted James, Tavares, and Terrell, I called my son-in-law, James White, the father of those three boys. Sit him down in our home. And I respected him. I said, James, your mother's gone. And you're unsaved. You're living the life of the world. I said, I would take you and your three sons, and we built an extension on our home in a talk. It was for James and his three sons. We put them in the home where they would stay together. And he tried it for about a month. And he said, Daddy, I ain't ready. And I did not get full custody because they was not mine. We agreed, and he was there with us. We got temporary custody until the Lord deliver you, and you can get your son back and raise them. It's not the parents' responsibility to train our children. It's the parents' responsibility. And I pray with you as I take a little time to encourage you. Pray for these young girls, these sons and daughters, these grandparents. I'm not demeaning anyone. I would give any young girl in this ministry when they have a child on their age, unmarried, I would give them gifts for their son or daughter. I would buy them clothes, dive or pamphlets, but I will not sponsor a baby shower. You don't reward young children for sinning. I know I'm not going to get much off that. If you did it, don't do it no more. Glory be to God. We got babies having babies. Putting the burden on grandmothers and grandparents. Our heart is bleeding. Some mothers and fathers and parents are bleeding. You raise them in the admonition of the Lord. And they're like we once were. They're making bad choices. They come with consequences resulting from bad or good. I pray to these young mothers, what I call young mothers, these mothers that are grown. Read your children in the admonitions of the Lord. Dress appropriately to your young daughters. Teach them that they have confidence in you that if somebody touched them inappropriate, they'll come to mama. If your daughter, whatever age they may be, come to you and say, mama, Bishop, touch me unseemly. You're no 
whether that's my character or not. Don't you rush up to get out of here, the bishop. You don't know what the bishop do in sin. I said in sin. I said in sin. I said in sin. I want to make it clear. Don't go out here and say the bishop was touch young women. I said in sin. Some of our children do things, can't come to the pen because they don't trust us. We scold them when we ought to be loving them. Oh, yeah, baby. I pray for the mothers. I pray for the grandparents. These children. We got an opportunity with another generation. Prophet Ann illustrated this morning. I pray for you, Cynthia and Drew. Got this teenage son. Teach him in the admonition of the Lord. With some dangerous time. Teach Jordan. I don't know where yet. Teach Jordan. How old he is? 15 years old. He got his permit. Gonna be taking driver's ed. But he still don't know how to drive. Professional drivers still have accidents. Glory be to God. Teach him in high school. Teach him at 15 years old. He got some sin nature hormone. At 15 years old, he got some sin nature hormone. What do you call them? Hormone. Some sin nature. Regardless of the moan, he got some sin nature in him. It will cause his flesh to react. And if he had been taught how to deal with it, do you not know your son, if he touched these girls at church, glory be to God. It can be called rape. And if he end up at alternative school right here in Prattville, if he end up in alternative school, it's on his record. Amen. Every time he go to get a job, he's going to play up on his record. Amen. He's a rapist. He's a molester. Glory be to God. Sebastian, you got another opportunity. You in turn you. Take the example of some men. There's got to be some men in this house of prayer, in the body of Christ. And you will have an example how to raise your sons and daughters. Teach them the way of the Lord. They may not never be a rapper. They may not never make rap music. They may not. That's your vision. That's your desire. Teach them the way of the Lord. Glory to God. Sooner or later, you may give it up. Because it's slim to none. I promise you I'm close. It's slim to none. If you're going to sing, preach, and do things for the Lord, you'll never become popular. You're going to have to take on some form of the world or worldly people. I know you don't like that. You're going to have to associate with worldly to be popular. Glory be to God. But I'd rather be saved and Holy Ghost be us than to be popular. And I close. I'm not trying to beat you down. I want to keep Hollywood spirits out of you. You start acting like Hollywood. They got some famous televangelists. They are no more than Hollywood preachers. I'm not called a name. I don't know, but some of them are like that. If you would move to some of these cities and go to this church, you'll find sinners in their church. Come on now. I don't care how many thousand they got. How popular they are. Sin is in the midst of all of us. Yeah. 
Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy. May you bless us going out, coming in, down, sitting, and uprising. May you prepare us for what you have next. May we leave here with a touch of the power of the gospel unto salvation. Deliver us, Lord. Many pray for healing. Many pray for financial blessing. Many pray for peace. Many pray, but if we get delivered, we got peace. Deliver us that we can do like Jeremiah. I ain't going to speak another word in the Lord's name. But you delivered him. And he said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Glory be to God. Deliver us like the Hebrew boys. If you don't do it, I know you're able. Deliver us. For we will love like you say love. In Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. You will be getting a one call. All members of the church will be getting a one call. But I would be sending it out for me. I would ask that you would hear, listen to it, and respond to the glory of God. we got a good month coming up next month. We've got some good days ahead of us. And we want to just be prepared for the coming of the Lord. God bless you. This to all of our guests again, give everybody away. Come on, give everybody away. We love you. Thank you for fellowshipping with us today. 